in March 2024, an unfortunate incident caused the closure of Kingston's historic La Salle Causeway bascule lift bridge. The operation of the bridge, the details might have been lost to history, but for the thoughtfulness of one of the operators. I'd like to give you an insight and to say thank you to Bridgemaster Tom, the operators Mohammed, Michael, Catherine and Doug, who for so many years in the little cabin you see behind me operated the La Salle Causeway lift bridge so faithfully and so well. They have gone now, but they, like the bridge, live on in memory. We'll start the review of control arrangements with an examination of the power supply. This is where all the power that ran the bridge came from. Important at the beginning of your lift is to make sure that all of the proper lights are on here because uh, if there's someone working on the bridge, underneath the bridge, up in the tower or in the motor room, uh, the, they will lock certain, certain switches off here. There. Now it takes a lot of power to run this bridge. There's two really big electric motors up in the motor room here. You can see a lot of uh, breaker switches and uh, they're, they're heavy duty. There's a, they take care of all the power for not only operating the bridge, but the lighting on the, on the causeway itself and uh, other gadgets along the way. Wow. So when you're first starting your, your lift, you make sure that all the proper lights are on and you, nobody uh, has locked out uh, essential controls for the, for the bridge. Now with a better understanding of the power supply, we can move on to discuss the bridge controls themselves. Uh, this is the control panel for the Basquiel Bridge here at Kingston uh, Lutzel Causeway. And uh, this, uh, this big uh, control panel is what we use to lift and lower the bridge. Now, it, uh, I, I'm not really sure that how old this is, uh, but looking at it, it looks like it belongs on the set for the original Star Trek series. So I suspect it's probably 60s, 70s. Not sure what was here before then. It's a pretty simple operation. Well, a lot simpler than people think because I, I've, I've told people what I did for a living here. They say, oh, that's easy. You're just hanging around. You push a button and the bridge goes. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. First, in the procedure is, well, at all times, we're looking for vehicles and pedestrian traffic on, on the bridge itself. Make sure we're clear before we do anything. Also, we slide these windows open so that we can listen. We want to listen for any emergency vehicles that might be on the way. You do not want to get in the way of an ambulance or a fire truck. Everything is clear. Uh, we also have CCTV, some uh, cameras that are monitoring both sides of the bridge so we can look at it with our eyesight and we'll take a look and make sure that the uh, cameras are clear of anybody crossing the bridge. We hit this switch here, it's called a flagman for some reason, and that will turn on the, the, the bells, the, the alarm bells, and it will start activating the traffic lights on each side to stop the traffic. We're watching for the traffic to, to come to a halt uh, if they're obeying the uh, traffic signals on each side. So now all the cars are stopped. There's no one on the bridge. We proceed with lowering the gates. Four gates here. Gate one and three are lowered first. These are the, uh, the barriers uh, like uh, on, you see on a, a railway uh, crossing. If, it, if, we, if we were in the railway, we'd call them wigwags. So gate one and gate three come down first. That's the entrance from both of the east and the west side. Then we drop gate two and four just in case some yahoo wants to go around. So now we've got the uh, bridge completely sealed off. Um, these, uh, the lights here will tell us when the gates are fully down. So all, of these, all of this is all uh, uh, light. Uh, the, the lights will in, indicate exactly what's happening with the bridge. So I've got green lights on all of these saying that the gates are down. Now we're going to pull this lever, which looks like something out of, a, out of an old Porsche, and that will unlock the span locks, 
which connect the east end of the bridge to the abutment. So you're going to unhook that and then you unlock the brakes. The brakes are on the drive system. So it's, uh, it's uh, the bridge is down, the drive system is locked. We want to unlock it and then we're ready to raise the bridge. This is the unit here. First, you've got to put your foot it down here, you might not see it on camera, but there's a dead man switch down here, or if you'd like a deceased person switch. Bridge won't operate unless there's a human here and that dead man switch has to be depressed. Now we're gonna raise the bridge. Again, making sure last minute, both ways, fire up the bridge and up it comes. Uh, there are limited, limited, limited switches and sensors on the bridge so it knows when to stop at the top of its uh, cycle. You can see, a, I don't know if you can see this, there's a, a span angle here. Generally, it, it pops up to around uh, 75 degrees uh, or basically straight up. Um, uh, we do not operate the bridge if we have wind gusts over 47 kilometers an hour for obvious reasons. We let our boats pass. As they pass, we note their uh, registration numbers or their names. Uh, the type of boat they are, if it's a sailboat or a cruise boat or a government boat. Uh, or, and uh, we also note what time the bridge is open, time of day, and then the time of the uh, completion of the cycle. Uh, also, the direction of the boats. We want to know where they're going, which, which way they're coming. So now my, my bridge is, my boats are clear. Back into the dead man switch. And, oh, uh, sorry, missed a step. When the bridge is fully up, we lock, the we put the uh, brakes on again. So the, the bridge is locked in the uh, uh, upright position. So to bring it down, it's basically the reverse of what we did before. We're gonna unlock or uh, take the brakes off and then lower the bridge. And again, the bridge can tell, do sensors and uh, switches uh, when it's coming to a close and it gently hopefully nestles back into the closed position. And then you uh, engage uh, the span locks, again, locking it to the east abutment, and then lock it, uh, put the brakes on. And then we let the cars go. Again, opposite of what we did before, gate four, gate two, gate three, and gate one. Lights will indicate whether they're up and, and when they are all up and ready to go, you turn the traffic lights back on, uh, give them the, the, the car as a green light, and that's the end of that cycle. Oh, uh, to, to start everything, of course, there's a key here. There is a, um, you turn that on at the beginning of the, of the uh, cycle, uh, turn it off at the beginning of the cycle. This is an emergency stop. Uh, lights will tell me if it's fully closed, nearly closed, nearly open, and fully open. Uh, all of these lights will indicate that certain brakes are on, uh, brakes disengage, uh, and of course the, um, the, um, the gates systems all lit up. Pretty simple, but um, there's, only, there's only really one way of doing it. It won't work in any other way. It has to be in that order. We also, uh, we can contact, we have marine radio here, we have telephone, we can talk to the boats. Uh, we generally, uh, well, the, we're here from 6 until 10, or we're here till, from 6 until 10. We open on the hour, every hour, except for 8, noon, uh, uh, 4 and 5 p.m just because of uh, heavy traffic flow at those times. I hope it's been interesting to hear something of how the LaSalle Causeway lift bridge actually functioned. We don't know what the future holds and what a new bridge will look like, but if you want to follow the story, please subscribe to this channel and look out for news. Thanks for watching.